Hello, so I just recently picked up this little uh, amplifier here. Um, so it's a stereo power amplifier and it says Yao Win VK2100. So I've got no idea if it's working or not. So I just picked it up secondhand, it's very, very cheap. Uh, untested um, from a local. Uh, untested usually means it's not working, uh, but let's see uh, if it works or or not. So it looks quite nice. It's got like machined aluminium front here. So one thing that's a little bit interesting is that you actually got some tubes in here. So I believe it's a transistor output stage, but it appears to have some kind of hybrid uh, tube. Uh, pre-amplifier but being a Chinese amplifier there's no guarantee that uh, showing some tubes actually means that they'll be used for anything sometimes they just add the tubes and heat up the filament so it looks like uh, it's got tubes so it'll be interesting to see but so on the front here all we got is power switch uh, I haven't plugged it in so nothing will happen a channel selector, so it's got auxiliary 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, I could at least have put like CD, tuner, tape, whatever. Uh, but anyway, uh, so it must have four inputs loudness and the volume. So the design is quite nice, it, it looks good class, but um, as usually is with Chinese amplifiers, they spend like 90% of the budgets on making the product look good and then the rest 10% uh, is spent on what's actually inside so it'll be interesting to see uh, have a look inside and see how this thing actually performs uh, let's have a look around the back it's quite heavy though so that's that's a good sign so we got our four inputs here Two speaker outputs and our mains input here. And it's a fused mains input. Let's have a look. Let's see if the fuse is intact. Yeah, it's intact, so that's a good sign. So, what does it say? AC 230, 110, 220. I think they probably put too many stickers on here. Uh, it should probably only have been one sticker. Uh, anyway, there's a 4 amp fuse in here, so that looks correct. 4 amp 250 volts, so that's good. Um, 2008, 325. Well, that's probably the production date, so it's it's not actually that old. Anyway, let's try power it up and see what it does. Okay, time to try power it on and see what happens. So I've hooked up um, my light bulb current limiter. Uh, we've got a watt meter here and just a multimeter. Just want to make sure there's no DC on the output or something because if uh, output transistor is shorter, we could have uh, DC voltage on the output. Then we don't want to connect a speaker. So. Anyway, let's try switch it on and see what happens. Okay. So it's, well, the quick flash from the light bulbs in the beginning is just the um, filter capacitors charging up. Um, it's drawing about 30 watts. Doesn't look like we have any. DC on the output. Well, it's just a little bit of DC offset, but that's nothing. Okay. That all looks good. So looking from the front of the amplifier here, when I power it up, um, we can see the two filaments actually coming alive so that means it is they are at least powered 
uh, whether they are actually part of the audio circuit or not uh, still remains to be seen but it's a good start so I'm ready to do some measurements and I've hooked up a load here and analog discovery to do uh, signal generation and all the measurements um, I'll let the amplifier heat up and we'll see what it shows here we have the frequency response so uh, around 0 dB at 1 kilohertz you see the low extension is pretty extreme minus 3 dB at somewhere between uh, 1.6 Hertz so it's from 1 Hertz here up to 500 kilohertz so that's a little bit unnecessary to have uh, this much space extension it would be probably better to roll it off at 20 20 Hertz especially if you're using playing records or something like that and you don't have a rumble filtered and uh, pretty extreme anyway um, the minus 3 dB at the high end is about 150 kilohertz. So yeah, looks fine. It's a small bump down here. Well, doesn't really matter. It's only half a dB up and it starts rolling off around 10 kilohertz, but it's only down uh, 0.7 dB. Uh, at 20 kilohertz so yeah it looks fine so it would be interesting to see what the loudness button does so let's try that here we have the frequency response with loudness enabled so that's the only tone control on the amplifier and we can see well basically give some extra bass and some extra treble so well travel is really not that much because at 10 kilohertz it's up 4 and 4.3 dB here because well this looks enormous but um, we're not gonna hear that because there's no energy in the music up here uh, 20 kilohertz here it's up 8 dB but again 20 kilohertz there's very little energy uh, in music so really it's about something 340B in uh, the treble and bass extension here so 100 Hertz 4.9dB uh, 50 Hertz about 6dB 30 Hertz 7dB and it continues all the way out uh, to this quite extreme extension here uh, one and a half hertz so yeah that's the loudness so of course it's not something most people will use but if you're playing very low levels uh, it might make sense to use loudness but if you're playing uh, music reasonably loud uh, shouldn't really need loudness so looking at the harmonic distortion so here we are from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz at one watt into eight ohm load so we can see it's pretty much constant uh, 0.1 percent across the whole range so we look down at the spectrum here so um, the first here is our fundamental and then we have our second harmonic third fourth fifth etc uh, harmonic so you see it's uh, very clearly dominated by the second harmonic uh, 55 dB down here so the uh, 0 dB reference here is the um, uh, maximum level of the uh, fundamental tone so this high second harmonic does indicate that the tubes on the front of the amplifier are actually being used as a part of the pre-amplifier buffer stage so running the same test but this time with uh, much higher output 50 watt into a form load uh, we can see the distortion does rise it's still 
uh, very even across the whole range, but it's about 0.4% uh, uh, now. And still we can see the um, harmonic uh, pattern. It's still, still dominated uh, by the second harmonic. So we have second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. Um, so it definitely seems uh, intentional and it's higher distortion than what you would expect from a purely transistor based amplifier so it seems very intentional to give uh, the second harmonic uh, tube kind of sound uh, from the amplifier so here a quick look at the uh, intermodulation distortion performance so we're sending in two tones uh, 19 kilohertz and 20 kilohertz and we're looking at the spectrum from 0 hertz up to uh, 25 kilohertz so we can see our two uh, tones here and then we get all the intermodulation distortion um, ideally we should only see these two but we do get a few extra tones coming up here so of course the dynamic range of the um, analog discovery is limited by its only 14 bit resolution but still um, this performance looks reasonable uh, we can see a few peaking up here but no nothing that looks really crazy uh, it looks quite okay yeah look at the output impedance so again from 10 hertz to 50 kilohertz um, and it's below 200 milliohm uh, all the way up to 20 kilohertz rises slightly uh, maybe close to 300 milliohm at 50 kilohertz so but that's very low uh, it's very good and here a measurement of power versus power output versus uh, harmonic distortion so but i can't really do this measurement uh, because the maximum input on the analog discovery is plus minus 25 volts um, above that voltage it's going to start clipping so what we see here so that corresponds reasonably well with what we're seeing so 100 watt into um, form load um, that's pretty close it's a little bit more than plus minus 25 volt uh, peak 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 um, but I need to add some uh, external some attenuation on the output of the amplifier before it goes into the analog discovery and I need to compensate for that in my software here so um, I think that's gonna be a part two to this video uh, where I'll make these little changes and we will try to do this measurement again so we can see uh, how much this amplifier can actually output into both foam and 8 ohm load uh, also, I want to have a look inside the amplifier, so I want to crack it open. Uh, we can have a look at how it's configured uh, and what the quality looks like inside. Um, I had a quick look online, and it seems in the start of this video, I believe I called it Yao Win, uh, but the O is not actually an O, it's a Q. So. I guess it's called Yakin or something. Um, it seems to be a fairly reputable uh, Chinese brand doing primarily tube amplifiers of reasonable quality. So that seems to reflect uh, in, in this amplifier. I mean, it looks decent quality. Uh, the measurements are pretty good considering uh, the pre-stage is probably tube-based, so that kind of uh, explains the uh, distortion behavior uh, dominated by the second harmonic and a little bit higher than what you would normally uh, expect from a purely transistor-based uh, amplifier. So it looks like it is a real hybrid amplifier. So, but we will find that out in part two. So I'm just going to stop this here. And anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again in part two. 
and I hope you're having a nice day. So bye bye for now.